When we start to survey the cast, you can put a little bit of acrylic resin on the table and that may, or on the platform and that makes it slide a little, the table slide a little bit better on it. And we start out by lining up our casts to where we have approximately a plane that is level to the floor and where our analyzing rod will touch, say, four of those molar cusps so that we have that plane relatively parallel to the floor. Then we also kind of look at it and see what our buckle surfaces look like when we look down that line and try to make sure that they're a little bit on the level. First thing that we're going to look for is guiding planes. And we want to see whether we can create some parallel surfaces on the mesial of these two canines. Uh, and the guide plate would be right behind the cusp tip back to the cingulum area. So our guide plate, we would like to see that surface relatively parallel to our analyzing rod. And basically, we're not far off when our plane is level with the floor. Uh, it might be that we have a little bit more of an undercut on this one than on that one, but as far as having to um, remove a lot of tooth surface to get two parallel guiding planes on those teeth, it's not going to take much to get them perfectly parallel to one another. That makes the partial much more stable if we have parallel guiding planes. So we have a pretty decent look there. Now let's take a look and see whether we have undercuts. We're looking to see when we put this analyzing rod up against the tooth, I hope you can see this little triangular space of light that says I have an undercut on this distal buckle of this molar. I have one, a slight one on this molar here. I can turn this a little more sideways. Whether it's an 01 or not, I'm not positive. And then if I look up here at this canine, I don't have much of an undercut. It kind of leans to the distal. I have one maybe more on the mesial, but it, it, I don't have much of one on the mesial facial. Now, I really don't want one on the mesial facial. I'll probably want one more on my premolars because if this is a maxillary RPD, two arms coming across these canines would not be extremely aesthetic for our patient. So we would be better off if we went back a tooth to the first premolar from an aesthetic standpoint. I do have um, one over on this side. Now let's look at this molar back here. I do have this triangular space of light. Now when you're surveying, the analyzing rod has to touch, the, the side of that rod has to touch the tooth. And anything below it is an undercut if you can see through that area. So I might have a slight one on that molar back there, but I have a much greater one on that molar. Now I can improve my survey by tipping this cast just slightly to the left, which would make this undercut a little bit smaller and this undercut a little bit larger. So we might try to level them out or even them out. I'm going to see what I have in the way of undercuts on the uh, first premolar. Not a whole lot and not a whole lot on this one. So I am going to change my tilt just a little bit. I'm going to bring my, I I'm tipped my cast to the patient's left. And when I did that, that will increase this undercut right here a little bit. It will get a little better on this side. This one will decrease a little bit, but that's okay. That will help me out on this side if I tip the plane just a little bit. Now, what you don't want to do is tip it dramatically from parallel because if there isn't an undercut or an infrabulge on the tooth when it's at a relatively flat position, it doesn't have an undercut. It just doesn't have retention. And I'm looking over here now to see what I've done. I have 
still have my 01 undercuts on the mesial facial of my two premolars. Better on that second premolar. And I have, if I go in this direction, I have an 01 undercut. It looks like I have some kind of an undercut in that area. But I do have a better one on that first premolar. Now, what if I didn't have any undercuts? I can actually prepare an undercut on the tooth, and that's okay. So if I don't have great undercuts, I have a relatively good tilt. I have relatively parallel guiding plate areas or guiding planes that I can create on those canines. And I do have some undercuts in some places. So let's look and see what our undercuts really look like. And I'm taking out my analyzing rod and I'm going to put in the .01 undercut gauge, which is an undercut gauge that has one notch on it, is what you have. And that is a .01 hundredths under, uh, inches undercut gauge. So when I'm looking for an undercut, I put my the uh, vertical rod up against the tooth, and then I pull that up until the little horizontal lip touches the tooth. And that is the point of 01 undercut. And I'm going to make a little mark on the tooth, and I'm going to put a little red mark right there so that I know where that 01 undercut is. I'm going to go ahead and mark one on my second premolar. I'm just going to mark them and see what I've got to work with. I have a, a, a better one or a good one right there. And then I'm going to look to see what I have on the distal buckle. Again, I put my vertical part up against the tooth. I raise the rod and I wait until that little horizontal lip touches the tooth. And that is my point of 01 undercut on that tooth. Let's see if we have one on the first molar. Well, I have one, but it's real close to the gingiva. I can't even pull it up because that's where it is. I prefer not to have it sitting on the gingiva. I'd like it up a little bit in that cervical third, but I'm going to mark another one on this too, just to know what I've got here, the range. All right. So let's see what we've got on the other side. I'm going to put my rod up against the tooth all the way down at the gingival level, and I'm going to pull it up, keeping this vertical aspect touching the tooth. And when I have that little horizontal lip touching, I'm going to just put a little mark in my tooth and that is my .01 undercut right there. Let's see if we have one on the first molar. If I put that rod, it's way, way back here, almost on the distal surface of that tooth. I've got one way, way back here. And then if I come up, the reason I'm looking at the mesial is a premolar. If I find one on that molar, I want to separate my retention as much as possible. So I do have one on my first premolar right there. Let's look and see what we have on our, excuse me, that was the second premolar. And I'm going to put it up against the rod, pull it up, and I've got a little mark way down here. And on this side, I too lack a uh, any kind of real good undercut on those canines. Now if I wanted it on the canines, I would have to tip my cast a little bit in this direction, but when I tip it in that direction, then I will lose the ones back on the molars. And I really don't actually want to clasp those two teeth. Alright, so I like what I've got here. I have um, undercuts in the positions that I want and they're relatively in the gingival one-third of the tooth, which is a good location for them. And I'm going to go ahead and place my lead in the sheath. And you want the lead to be sticking down a little, little lower than the sheath, but it's protected by that sheath to keep it from breaking 
when you're going around the teeth to survey them. So I'm going to put them up in my surveyor. I'm going to turn the knob and catch it. I want to avoid this clamp being right on the lead. I kind of turn it sideways so that it's clamping on the metal on the side somewhat and not clamping right on the lead because it will sometimes break it. To survey this cast, we're going to bring the edge of the lead down level at the gingival level and you're going to have to move that rod up and down and the platform at uh, the table at the same time but you want the side of the lead the side of the lead to be marking the the undercut the height of contour on the teeth if you bring it up like this you're marking the contour and it may not be the is the height of contour of the tooth so if you bring that lead down to the gum line and let the side of the lead mark the height of contour, you'll get it go all the way down to the gingiva with your lead and let the side of the lead move along this tooth and go from tooth to tooth to do this. You may be getting some extraneous marks on the cast and it's not a problem if it's right on the gum line then it's telling you that the height of contour is right at the gingival level if you're using the side of the tooth side of the lead to make this mark that's very common on a maxillary arch because the teeth tend to lean toward the buckle on the maxillary arch so I have my height of contour is basically at the gingival level on the lingual of these maxillary teeth. I'm letting the side of lead mark, but that side of the lead is marking right there at the gum line. Again, that's not unusual for the maxillary. So I'm coming around and letting the side of the lead touch. I have my lead down at the gingival level so that the side of the lead is marking and on around mark all the teeth because you need to know where the height of contour is for all of these teeth then I'm going to do something called tripoding the cast so I'm taking my lead out and I'm going to put my O3 undercut gauge which will be a little different in my surveyor I have a black one this is an old surveyor. You will have one with three notches on it. So what you're going to do to tripod the cast is you're going to put the, the rod, you're going to raise the rod and you're going to look for three spat, spots that are widely spaced that are touched by the side of that O3 gauge and I've, I've found it already. So I'm going to put a little mark. I'm not going to move that gauge up and down. I'm not going to move my tool up or down and I make a little mark and I'm going to put a red mark through that I'm actually going to make a, a cross I'm going to come over here see where it marks on the other side make a cross go to the anterior three widely spaced marks the purpose of this is when this goes to the laboratory your te technician can look at these three marks and he can take the cast and orient it on his articulator touching with three positions all touching and then he has his cast in exactly the same orientation that you have your cast so when he's working on it he'll have it in the exact same position then with a blue pencil circle that bomb site is what some people affectionately call it by doing it in the red and blue if you get a lot of extraneous marks with um, the lead on your cast you will have no way uh, no difficulty in showing um, where it was